Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Good day to you, my friend, and welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so very, very much for letting us be part of your day today. Right now, my Bible sits open to the book of Ruth, a little book in the Old Testament. The book of Ruth in chapter 1, the very end of chapter 1. Now, if you can right now, get out your own copy of the Word of God and join me there, the end of Ruth and chapter 1. Also, you may want to get something on which you can jot some notes. We try very doggedly to give a clear outline outline, and that's going to be true here today as we come to the end of the chapter one of Ruth, where the wreckage of a family begins to turn around. My title, frankly, for this broadcast uh, in this set of verses is this, God gives grace. And you'll see why we say that here in just a moment. I have a gospel tract here in front of me I want to encourage you to get, but let me lead into our Bible study time this way. Now, as we return to the study here in the book of Ruth, we come, frankly, to a very most practical portion. It can be summarized in two words, shame and grace, shame and grace. Now, put into the simplest formula I know how, these verses teach us this, Our sin always brings shame, but when we repent, God always brings grace. Now, we all love grace, don't we? But we run from shame. You run from shame. I run from shame. In every era of human history, it's always been the same way. As the church began after the coming of the Holy Spirit there in the book of Acts, it was James, the half-brother of Jesus, who wrote these words to the early church believers. He said, God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace to the humble. That is exactly what we're going to see here at the end of Ruth chapter 1. The same apostle James also wrote these words in his book. He said, confess your faults one to another and you shall be healed. Well, there's a verse that doesn't get preached on much anymore. Well, today in the book of Ruth, we get to see those very ideas lived out in a real life story a story with all its sordid details. Get your Bible, get something on which you can jot some notes, would you please? Now, before I go any farther, my announcers already said that Bible Tract Echoes, this radio program, is the radio arm of a larger ministry called Bible Tracts Incorporated. And by that word, tracts, we're referring to a gospel tract. And that's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The track I have in my hand right now is entitled, We Are Grateful, and it's designed to share the gospel with people who are in or have been in the military. Let me read to you how the track begins. It says, hello, veteran. Yes, we're grateful for what you did to preserve our freedom and during separation and loneliness. You may have come home safely without combat experience, but perhaps you saw bloody battles and the broken, mangled bodies of comrades. Maybe you were gravely wounded. It may be that you suffer even today from injuries received in the military. Whatever your circumstances, we thank you for serving and are glad you came home. But then the next paragraph begins with this question. Have you ever wondered if it's true that a good and faithful service man or service woman who dies for our country is assured of escape from hell and an eternity in heaven? Now, that's the question we use to lead into a gospel presentation because, my dear friend, just because a person has been a faithful soldier, their own personal works cannot deal with a sin stain on their soul. They need a savior. They need somebody to save them from their sin, just like everyone else. Our goodness and our good works, even our military service, cannot cause us to escape hell's fire. But Jesus said he can. And he does 
through his cross. Here's a great track. Now, at the end of the program, my announcer will give you three ways by which you can give to us your name and mailing address. Do that and we'll send you free of charge a sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. Please do that today. If you can't wait to the end, just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. All right, if your Bible is open to the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 19 begins this way. So they too, this is Naomi and Ruth, so they too went on until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass when they were come to Bethlehem that all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath tested against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me. So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. That's our passage here for today. If you have that notepad open there, let me go ahead and give you four key words that form my outline for verses 19 to 22. They all begin with the letter T. Here are the four words. They are travel, talk, turmoil, and timing. Again, travel, talk, turmoil, and timing. I want to lay out these four verses rather quickly, and then I want to make a very practical application for us today. First of all, the word is travel, based upon verse 19. There Naomi and Ruth travel from the country of Moab back to the Jewish territory and specifically to the town of Bethlehem. Now for Naomi, she's returning home. For Ruth, though, she is going to a place which is very foreign to her. It's a place which, well, it can hold great hardship, and she knows this because she's a Moabitess woman. We do not know where exactly in Moab Naomi's family had settled. I figure, though, that the traveling must have been about 65 miles to get back to Bethlehem, and probably that was on foot. That's number one, the travel. Number two, the talk, still based upon verse 19. Verse 19 says, all the city was moved by them, and they said, is this Naomi? Now, that word moved there in verse 19 means that Naomi's return made her the talk of the town. It appears that Naomi and her deceased husband were well known and well thought of before they left. Now, all in Bethlehem see a very stark contrast. Naomi went out full, but is returning empty. Naomi's life is now, well, it's now a key topic of public talk, and that's something that none of us really wants to see happen. All right, we have the travel, we have the talk. Now, the word is turmoil. Turmoil based upon verses 20 and 21. Naomi seems to openly confront all the public talk. She owns her shameful state. Now, earlier in our study of Ruth, I mentioned what Naomi says here. At the time I made the comment, I made these points, points beginning with the letter A. I said that Naomi allows herself to be humbled and face public humility for the sin that she was part of. Then Naomi acknowledges her personal wrongdoings. In verse 20, she says that Jehovah has dealt bitterly with me, not us, me. And in verse 21, she says Jehovah has testified against me. Now, these are not words that saying that she is being unjustly dealt with. She is acknowledging her sin and her disobedience. But next, Naomi accepts God's discipline. She openly, publicly admits that what she is experiencing is from God. It is God that is afflicting her. Do you remember those words from the book of James? She is confessing her faults to one another. The entire city knows of her ruined condition, so she confesses her sin as far as it is known. But now, let me come to my fourth word, beginning with the letter T, and it is the word timing. The word timing. 
is based upon verse 22. Here is where God's grace really shows up. Verse 22 ends with these words. They came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. Oh, friend, those are sweet words. They came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. Years ago, there was a a spiritual mentor in my life who used to say these words. And I'm quoting now. He said, you obey God even when it doesn't make sense. And let God write the last chapters. I'm going to say that again. You obey God even when it doesn't make sense and let God write the last chapters. Now, what he meant was this. Living the Christian life is not a cakewalk. It's a walk of faith. Faith in the love of our saving God, faith in the wisdom of our saving God, and faith in the rightness of the word of our saving God. I'm referring to the Bible. God does not explain in advance what he's going to do when we begin to walk by faith. He does not tell us ahead of time how he's going to undo the years that the locusts have eaten. As Naomi went back to Bethlehem, all she knew was that God was there and he was blessing. She knew she was out of the will of God by when she left Israel. She didn't belong in Moab. She knew she could never experience God's blessing unless she was where God's word declared that God's people, in this instance, the Jewish people, where they were to be living. So Naomi goes to the place of obedience. She owns the shame of her personal disobedience, and she owns God's discipline. All this she does in open open, open repentance. And where, where do we find God's grace? (laughs) At the end of verse 22, where it says it was the beginning of barley harvest. It is through this barley harvest that God's going to meet Naomi's physical needs. It's through this barley harvest that God's going to change people's attitudes and feelings towards Ruth, this Moabitess. It is through this barley harvest when the ladies arrive and when they arrive at this time period that God was going to take their brokenness and their ruin and turn it into blessing and reward. It's a lot easier, friend. I'm going to tell you right now. It's a lot easier to preach on repentance and preach on God's grace than it is to practice repentance, not knowing how in the world God's grace is going to show up. Today, perhaps I'm talking to some believers that are in our radio family who are not walking in obedience. You're walking in disobedience. You've already begun to experience the sting of your sinfulness, God speaking to your heart, you're convicted for your sin, may I say to you, obey, run back, confess. As far as your sin is known, confess, own your affliction, say that it's because of sin, and God will show you his grace. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, You can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.